Hi, my name is Savidia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy. Today, I want to teach you and give you tips on how to play both editions of Jamaica, one of my favorite pirate themed games up there with Merchants and Marauders. What I love about Jamaica is how much fun it is and it's super easy to learn. It's one of those rare games where you can have preschoolers competing against seasoned players and everybody's having a blast. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button. It helps a lot. In Jamaica, you play one of six pirates competing in the yearly race around Jamaica to take your ship around the island faster than anyone else. Doing so, you'll fight with other pirates, discover treasures, pick up some loot and gold to avoid getting pushed back too much. At the end of the game, score gold for how far you've gone and how much you've got on board. The pirate with the most gold is declared the champion of Jamaica. To set up the game, start by placing the board in the middle of the table. Then you're going to pick a color and take the corresponding cards and place the ship on the Port Royal starting line here. Shuffle the treasure cards, pick nine out of them and place them face down here. Place the nine treasure tokens on the skulls around the map. Place the combat die here. Each player takes a player board. It depicts the five holds of your ship where you can load food, gold or gunpowder during the game. Place the three food on one hold and the three doubloons on another. Keep all the other resources nearby. Then the players will roll these two dice. The highest roll will be the first player and will take the compass marker and start the game. All players must start each round with a hand of three cards. So for the first one, pick the top three cards from your deck. Leave the draw deck on the top right of your player board here. The captain then rolls the two action dice and examines the cards. All players have the same set of 11 cards. Each player must decide which of the three cards is the most useful this turn based on the values of their morning and evening dice. Before we decide on the best card, let's have a look at what all the cards can do. All cards have two sides, a symbol on the left for the morning action and a symbol on the right for the evening action. The green and red arrows indicate you can move either forward or backward, while the other three symbols let you collect one of the three resources, gold with this one, food here, or gunpowder with that one. The amount you load or the distance you move depends on the two action dice rolled by the active player. After rolling the dice and checking his cards, the captain places one die on the morning section and the other on the evening section of the navigation box. All players at the same time select one card from their hand and place it face down in front of them here. Once all players have selected their card, they reveal their cards simultaneously. Each player resolves the cards one by one, starting with the first player and then going clockwise. The cards will be resolved completely, first the symbol on the left and then the symbol on the right. Load the type of goods shown on the card equal to the number showing on the morning die and then the evening die. Managing your hold takes some getting used to as you can only load one type of good per hold and you cannot top up a hold with goods in it. If all your holds are full, you must discard one hold in order to add the new resource. Now, if you've chosen to move, you move your ship, the number of spaces equal to the corresponding die. Now, you can land on at sea, you can land on a port, or you can land on a pirate lair. If you land on a pirate's lair with a treasure, remove the token and draw the top treasure card and place it next to your hold. If the card is a bonus point of negative points, keep it face down. It will be added or subtracted from your points at the end of the game. There's also four treasure cards, which are pretty cool. This one gives you a sixth hold. This one allows you to hold four cards instead of three. This one lets you re-roll your combat die or force your opponent to re-roll its combat die once. And this one adds plus two to your combat rolls. Players can have more than one treasure card. Now, let me show you what happens when your ship lands at port or at sea. If you land on a port, return the gold from your hold to the supply for the amount of gold equal to the number shown. If you land at sea, discard food tokens equal to the number of white squares shown on the space. Like gold, you can take it from several holds if you want. If a player cannot pay the full amount of gold or food, then we have what's called a shortage. This is the only difference in the rules between the first and second editions. Let me start by showing you what we do in the first ed. Pay what you can afford. 
Then move the ship backwards until you reach a space that you can pay in full. In the second ed, your attack die has a shortage option. So instead of moving backward your ship to a place that you can afford, you're going to roll the die and move the ship according to the result. With this option, you do not pay the cost of that new space, but you can still battle. If you roll two or four, you move backward to the next port space. If you roll six or eight, move backward to the next sea space. On a 10, you move back to the next pirate lair and with a star, you just stay put. Now, both options are good. I suggest you try both of them out and see which one you prefer. Now, let me explain battles. Whether it's the result of shortage or whether you move there, if you end your movement in a space that is occupied in an opponent's space, you will have to first engage in combat before doing anything else. To fight, you will have to use the combat die. You may add gunpowder and special weapons if you have any. The player who has just moved is the attacker. You decide if you want to commit gunpowder to improve your chances. Here, the attacker commits his three gunpowders. He then rolls the combat die to add two to 10 to the gunpowder committed. That's the combat strength. The attacker rolls a six and with the three gunpowder, that's a combat strength of nine. If the attacker rolls a star, you win the battle immediately. The combat ends. Whether you win immediately or after the battle, all the gunpowder committed will go back to the supply. Now it's the turn of the defender to commit gunpowder and roll the combat die. The defender feels he needs to commit all his three gunpowder and rolls a six. Now this is a draw, so nothing would happen after this combat. Feeling lucky, she prefers to use her siren saber and re-roll. Now rolling an eight, plus the three gunpowder, that's 11 and beats the nine of the attacker. Both players will discard the gunpowder they committed during the battle, and the winner has three options against the defeated player. Most of the time, the winner of a battle will either steal goods from one hold or one treasure card from the defeated player, but sometimes you might prefer to give a negative card to the loser. Now, if you land with two or more ships, pick the opponent you want to fight and resolve one battle only. Once all players have played their two actions and battles are resolved, the player on the left will be the new active player for the following round until one of the player's ships reaches the finish line and that triggers the end of the game. In this case, the black crosses the finish line in the morning and doesn't resolve the evening action. All other players finish their turn and at that point, players are awarded gold depending on where they are on the track. The first player gets 15 gold this one here gets three, and these two were behind the red lines, so they will lose five gold. This gold is added to any gold a player has on its holds. Also add treasure or subtract cursed treasure cards. Here the black player gets 15 for reaching Port Royal, plus five gold on board, plus seven, and minus three treasures for a total of 24 gold. In the end, the player with the most gold is declared the champion of Jamaica. In case of a tie, it will be the player who is further ahead. And if both are in the same place, well, they can share the win. Now, my tips to win at Jamaica are, it is a race after all. And while gold can score you points, it is usually more advantageous to try to cross that finish line first and get the points from that, especially if there's a big gap between you and the other players. Food is what allows you to move forward, especially towards the end of the game, so try to stock up early on. Getting a good hold of gunpowder or some special weapons can dissuade some other aggressive players from attacking you. The winner in Jamaica is not always the player who wins the race. If you're in the back, try to amass a lot of gold, especially if you have those plus five and plus seven treasure cards, it can help a lot. Pay close attention to your holds and manage them properly because it can be heartbreaking sometimes when you have to throw away some hard-earned doubloons by mistake. Although you might have a shortage die in the combat die, I think I prefer the option where you decide where to go. It reduces a lot the randomness and I think it's a lot more fun. It can be cool sometimes to not have any gold so you can go backwards and get some of those treasures. So that's how you play Jamaica. It's easy to learn and quick to play. It can be very competitive and that makes it a lot of fun. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is right here. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.